Hello, welcome to the Quakes Motel. My name's Conan. Last year, I did a series of videos, which compressor in the MPC, which EQ in the MPC, and which reverb in the MPC, and I meant to do a which delays in the MPC. Various things happened. I took a bit of time out because I had a whole bunch of work on. Finally, I'm getting to do the which delays in the MPC. Let's jump in. Okay, so I've got some sounds on the MPC which we're going to use to test. We're going to basically run through all of the delays in some detail, but not really, really deep detail, especially on the multi-taps, because you probably could make a video just entirely about them. But we'll touch on the controls. Uh, I will go into a little bit of history if there's any units which I think that perhaps they're emulating or they're inspired by. So we'll touch on that a little bit as well. And some use cases, some real world use cases as well. Uh, obviously, you'll be able to hear that use uh, with the test sounds that I've got. So let's run through them. There's quite a lot to get through. So feel free to skip through if it's a delay that you don't think you're going to use. But I think it's worthwhile sticking through to see each individual delay. The same as in my previous videos on the compressors, the EQs and the reverbs in the MPC. And it'll just give you a nice kind of overall knowledge of the delays in the MPC. And you'll know which delay to go for if you're working on a particular track and you want a particular vibe. So we'll start with the air delay. Starting with that because it is at the top of the list and we'll go through the list alphabetically. But also it's a good one to start off because it's a really good all rounder. If you just kind of want to delay that you're going to use on the vocal or just some pad sounds or, or what you know whatever just a general delay it has the option to sync and it has the option for roll off on the highs and the lows you can spread it it just kind of has all the, the all, everything that you need in a digital delay so we'll start at the top and some a, a lot of these controls uh, are universal throughout all of the plugins so I'll only touch in detail on the, on this one but then obviously they'll also be in the other plugins as well. So time, obviously, when you've got it in sync, it will be in sync to the tempo that you've got set on your MPC. And you can change that. You can see here from 32 triplets you have all the way up to when you start having entire bars. I mean, that's like eight bars, I think, which is a bit ridiculous. Can't see why you would ever use that. I would say generally eighths and quarters and maybe a bar maybe triplets and stuff that i would say eight and quarters are certainly the ones that i use the most so we're using it all of them as a return effects just to let you know i've got them on return four that way you can send multiple sources to the same delay or the same reverb and you're not taking up loads and loads of slots so with reverbs and delays generally as a rule although there are no absolute definitive rules but generally generally as a rule you would stick a delay or a reverb on your returns because you have four in the mpc and that way you can send multiple sources to that single delay or that single reverb and you're not taking up loads of processing power or loads of plug-in slots so as I said, this is a return effect. I've got it set up. So with return effects, generally you would want mix at 100%. I can't really think of a reason why you wouldn't. But for some reason, the defaults on these plugins aren't always set to 100%. So bear that in mind when you're adding delays to your returns that they're not always going to be set on 100%. So just bear that in mind. Check it every single time. So mix, there we go, 100%. Sync, like I said, that's changing the timing and it will sync to the tempo that you have on your MPC. You can turn that off and on and when you have milliseconds here you can change it in a lot more detail but not exactly. Maybe if you hold shift, yes if you hold shift as is the case on the MPC if you hold shift you can be a lot more accurate. But generally the air delay myself personally I would use the sync because there's other delays that I'll show you later on which don't have the sync option and you can have a lot more fun with those uh, creatively. Feedback is going to be how many delays you have, you know, the length of the delay. So going all the way to zero you can kind of get a slapback effect which is just really like one or a couple. Sounds like this three there. And that's really useful for vocals, but also the synth sounds, just to give it a little bit more body, a little, it's almost kind of like what a reverb would do. 
but you're getting a reflection. So slap back is a really, really useful thing to do and you'll get that on most of the delays if you have the feedback set all the way back to zero. I mean, that's a classic 80s uh, boogie kind of uh, electro sound to have a slap back on there, D-Train, you know, that kind of thing. That's obviously the Oberheim DMX. Yes, it is the DMX. Another uh, early 80s drum machine. Moving over to here, you have uh, the ability to be able to spread it in the stereo field. Let's take that up a little bit. So you can almost hear it ping-ponging. Before we get too deep into this, I didn't really touch on this and the feedback. What you're going to see me do a lot, and this is something that I love doing on delays, it's a big kind of dub reggae thing, it's a creative thing, uh, people like Radiohead use it a lot, I don't really hear it used in hip hop a lot, lo-fi it gets used in a lot, but what we do is we enter a territory of something called self oscillation, where basically the delay starts delaying the delay and the, the echoes are bouncing off the echoes and you get this amazing effect, let's just take that back a little bit, where it's almost infinite. I love that. And I'll go into more detail on some of the more kind of analog emulation delays a bit later on. You can hear with the delay that is gradually rolling off the highs. So let's go on to here and that's what that's basically doing. If I have that all the way up to 20, It's not doing it as much. Uh, you have resonance frequency and resonance here as well. So you can have some real fun with that, especially with automation. And then you have a high pass filter as well, which obviously takes the low end off. Let's just take that back a little bit. Let's damp that down nicely. Take the resonance right off, resonance filter down to about there, and you'll hear I'll roll the, the lows off. So you can hear by automating these controls or just playing with them live, you can start getting some really, really nice creative effects with the delay. These kind of things, especially the self oscillation thing, they're not the kind of thing that you would have running all the way through a track. You could do, and I believe that Radiohead probably have done. I reference them a lot in this video because I love the way that Nigel, their sound engineer, uh, uses delays and the way Tom York, they use them creatively a lot. Massive, massive Radiohead fan, by the way. So I'm probably going to reference them a lot, but also people like Lee Scratch Perry, King Tubby, you know, some of the dub reggae producers as well. They use delays in this creative way, but it's not something that you would generally have running the entirety of a song because it's just going to sound mental. So generally you would use a delay like this. With like maybe 50%, you know, so a vocal it would be nice. Maybe on quarter. Spread right out to give some width. Got the lows rolled off. Take this damping up. So you can hear just by feeling the controls, playing around with the controls, the kind of creative effects you can get. So I've gone into this one in the most detail because a lot of these controls run throughout all of the plugins. So I'm not going to need to go into as much detail as I go through the plugins. So moving on from air delay, we'll go to air diff delay. Now air diff delay is a bit of a weird one. It's kind of for me, it's kind of emulating a unit called the Eventide H3000, I think it was called. It was definitely Eventide. And it was an 80s digital unit, which had this effect on it, which was, I think it was called Crystal or Crystallize or Crystalline. And it was almost like a, a, a granular 
kind of reverb effect rather than an actual delay as such. And I'll show you what I mean. So using this diff diffuse, let's take that back to about Using the diffuse, listen to how kind of like the transient kind of is of the delay. So you hear it's kind of, see what I was saying, double check. Always make sure that's on 100%. Generally make sure it's on 100% if you're using it as a return effect. So that's almost like a reverb rather than a delay. But I think they're kind of trying to emulate the H3000 and the kind of granular 80s uh, synth that kind of reverbs and stuff. So that's great on percussion. I mean, that's 80s all day long for me. Uh, and again, you know, you've got the, the feedback so you can change the length of it. If you have it up really, really high, you start getting into the territory of the Lexicon 224, which was the reverb unit that people like Vangelis were using. I think he used it on the Blade Runner, that really long, like almost infinite reverb. So he wasn't actually using this, obviously, because this is an NPC and it didn't exist then. But the Lexicon 224 was known for being able to create this infinite reverb. And then the H3000, I'm sure that's what it's called, but do correct me if I'm wrong below in the comments. Uh, with this kind of granular kind of sound. You can pan it. You can, you've got stereo width control here. Really nice spacey effect. And then you can obviously low cut as well. So you want really sizzly, infinity kind of reverb. So that's really, really good for things like synth wave and uh, music scores, film scores, sound effects. Uh, but it's more, it's almost like a reverb rather than a delay. But you can still get delay effects out of it, obviously, uh, by changing the timing here. And of course, also you can turn sync off and on. So that's a really, really useful overlooked delay, I think, as a, if you use it creatively as a kind of reverb effect. So moving on into air, my least favorite delays, multi-tap delays, they drive me mental. Again, default, always on 50%. I guess that makes sense if you're gonna be using it as an insert effect, but as a, as a re return effect, send effect, you want it on 100%. So just make sure you check that because otherwise you're gonna be getting the dry source mixed in and you don't really want that if you're using it as a return effect because you just get very, very messy very, very quickly. So with a multi-tap, it's kind of emulating the old style tape um, the delays uh, that had multiple heads. So a tape would spin round, it would record the initial sound, and then it would literally take that sound and roll it over each individual head and you would get multiple delay sounds. And then with that, you could pan them in different areas. I mean, this is more emulating the digital multi-tap ones. There's one a bit later on, which I'll show you, which is kind of copying or, or get, gets inspiration from a unit called the WEM Copycat, which was a multi-head tape delay. I think also the Binson possibly as well, which was something that Pink Floyd used to use, Dave, David Gilmore used to use. So, uh, but I'm not gonna go into too much of the history of that. Multi-tap delay, the, it, This, especially this particular plugin, is a plugin that you could do an entire video on. So I'm not gonna go into it too much, but let me put it this way. You can hear it dancing around. It's one of those effects that can get very, very messy very, very quickly. So me personally, I use it not very often, if at all, to be honest. I don't really like multi-tap delays, but that's not to say that this isn't a really, really good multi-tap delay because it is. It ticks all the boxes. You've got sync, you can take sync off. You've got the feedback, as I explained. You've got the panning. You've got the volume of each individual tape head. You can turn them on. You can have, you can have, turn them off. You can have them on. You can change how many you want. So it's really, really useful. It's, it's again, very, very in-depth plugin. You can change the routing of it. You've got filters on it. You can change the feedback, obviously. I think that, yeah, that's the same on that page. So there's a lot to it. And, and I don't wanna go into too much detail, but basically with a multi-tap delay, you can choose where you're placing the delay all over the place. It dances all over the place. 
can hear it going around uh, because three and four are panned hard. So you could have, you know, I mean, you can place these in slightly different places. Let's put that to like 34. Let's have that uh, 68. <laughs> So you can hear it's now dancing across the uh, the stereo field. And then obviously you can individually change the volume of each one of those uh, delays. Very, very in-depth. If, if you like multi-tap delays, this is, this is your one. This is your guy. So we'll move on to now. Now we're getting into... Okay, so obviously they're the Air ones. Those came in later updates in the MPC firmwares. The delay analogs were the earlier ones. You can see there's a whole bunch of them here, but we'll start with the delay analog sync. So these are a lot more simple. They have a simple GUI, but they are still really, really useful. And these are kind of, I would say, more emulating or inspired by some of the, the dubby units, uh, the Roland Space Echo, uh, those kind of units that we used on Dub Reg A and that that kind of thing. And I'll show you what I mean in a second because we can use the self-oscillation really, really, I love it in this. So this is the sync version. There's also a non-sync version. So again, let's set that to 100. So you can hear that there's a little bit of a roll off and what the roll off is doing is emulating tape delay because that would roll off gradually as it passed over each time uh, over over the head it would kind of have a, a natural roll off this can also be adjusted with the ramp feedback now this is where you can get into the self oscillation stuff drive it into overdrive So you can do some really crazy things with that. Again, it's the real kind of dubby stuff. Now the, the sync one you can use in that way, but you can also, with the delay analog, you can go a, a step further almost. Because you don't have sync and you can really play around with the timing. Again, let's roll that up to 100. With the timing on this, because it isn't an exact science, now you can start doing some crazy things. Now this is something that I used to love doing on old units. It's a Lee Scratch Perry dub reggae type thing. King Tubby, all those guys, mad scientist. So you get it into self oscillation. So that's just pure dub reggae. So I love it for that. Obviously you can automate the controls as well. So you'll be able to use the Q links and automate them. Moving on to the delay HP. Again, very, very simple, but it's given you uh, high pass roll off and you also have resonance. So you're having, these are delays now with filters in. So these are really, really useful as well. Doesn't have the sync on it. So you have to kind of find the delay. We used to have charts. There's charts online that you can uh, find where it will tell you the match the, the BPM. It will tell you what milliseconds to give you quarters, eighths, triplets, 32, 16s, etc. We used to have them on the wall in studios. Uh, so it was a, uh, yeah, just a chart that you would use, a reference chart. Often you would use your ears because obviously you had live instruments. So things weren't always in time anyway. But you can have some real fun. Again, 100%. Okay, right, so with the timing, same as the previous one, take this into oscillation, self-oscillation. So you can see how creative you can get with these delays if you're using them in that way. 
again, it's it's something that you don't want to use. I, I, I think little tricks like that are little golden tricks that you can use in a mix or on a particular track as a kind of statement, like, listen to this, this is really cool. But you have to be careful that you don't overuse it. Saying that, though, people like Lee Scratch Perry would use it in virtually every single track, and it just sounded brilliant. So just ignore everything I just said then, because... Scratch Perry, Tubby, all those guys were doing it in every single track and it sounded fine. So moving on to the LP version, it's exactly the same as the previous one, but obviously the filter is different. Take that up. So again, you can see how creative you can be. Really, really good for that kind of stuff. Moving on to delay mono sync. Okay. So delay mono sync, very, very simple, straightforward. A good delay for just using on vocal, something like that. If you just want something simple, take that up to 100 again. Here you can change, obviously it's sync, so it's quarters, eighths, etc. Not too many options. You don't have a triplets option here no and with the damping what it's doing is it's gradually rolling off the delay as it goes so it's nice to use in tracks with a vocal so it's not overpowering too much i'd probably use that on maybe a quarter and again, you can go into the self oscillation. I don't need to show you that again on, on that. The delay mono is exactly the same, but without the sync option. So you have, you can change the milliseconds exactly. Again, 100. <laughs> So there you go. Again, you can use that really nicely, creatively. Moving on to the delay multi-tap. Now this one can get very messy very, very quickly. So we're going back to the multi-tap again. You've got three heads here. You can change the gain, the panning, and the timing of each one. Let's take that up straight away. Then you can change the feedback up here. Well, obviously not individually for each delay. Damping again does the same as everything else. It just gives you a nice roll off. So with this, it's nice to maybe have one front and center, one panned all the way over there, one panned all the way over there. And actually let's... So when you have multi-tap, there's not a lot of point in having each head delaying at the same time because you don't notice the effect. So you can see here I've made each timing slightly differently. So it's slightly different. So it will then kind of like bounce around the mix, almost like a ping pong. So you can hear it going, da, 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 bouncing over there. So that's why I've panned these. And then obviously you can change the gain of each one of those as well. And then hit up here. So there you go. I think with multi-tap, you can have some fun with that one, but I think with multi-tap, because it can get messy very quickly, I personally, if I needed to use a multi-tap, which is not very often, but if I did, I would use the previous one, the air uh, multi-tap, because you can sync and you have the option to turn the sync off as well, obviously. But on that one, yeah, you have the sync and you want to kind of it can just get messy really quickly. But I'm not saying don't use that because I actually like the non-sync delays because um, they have their place and creatively they can be really, really nice in stuff like lo-fi and dub. So moving on to the ping pong. Ping pong, I love ping pong. It's a classic old effect. Um, and I, I probably use it a bit too much. Quite, <laughs> I wouldn't say too much, but I have had... Uh, Sometimes when I do mixes for clients, they want me to do things exactly as they've 
they, they'll show me a rough mix and they want me to keep it but sometimes they they will say be a bit creative ping pong is what i'll always reach for and occasionally i, I will get a client come back and say can you drop the can you get rid of the ping pong because not everyone likes it it's subjective i love it it's classic effect it's really just the delay going backwards and forwards in the mix it's just something that gives a, a mix a bit of width a bit of depth and a bit of fun. Let's take that all the way up again. Damping is the same as on all the other previous ones. And this one, you don't have sync, so you have to use your ears. So again, you can use the trick of the self oscillation, start playing around with it. But it's it would be handy if they had a sync version of it. Let me put it that way. OK, moving on to delay stereo. This is a, just a classic stereo delay, no, no frills. It just has the normal controls. You want that up to 100% because it's a return, as I've explained a million times now. You have the time in here, which isn't synced, so you can play around with that. And you have your feedback here, so you can do your self-oscillation stuff. <laughs> There you go, pretty standard stuff. So again, nice creative uh, delay. Then go into delay sync, which is the same, but you have the sync option on it. So everything's the same, except you can sync here. It does actually have triplets. It's just my eyesight. I can't actually see that tiny T. My bad. So again, make sure that's on 100%. Feedback, again, you can do the self-oscillation stuff. There you go, and that, obviously that can all be automated. Delay tape sync, now this one is fun. This is the one which I think is kind of like the WEM copycat, but also like multiple other tape delay units. So here you have multiple heads. You've got four heads here. Time, feedback, and ramp, same as all the other ones, and a tone, a spread. And if, if, if let's do it with a clap because that seems to be the best way to do it. We'll stick that on eight. Take that up a little bit. I'm going to have the ramp right up so that there's no roll off. And if I start changing the heads, I'll start bringing in the other heads. You can hear how creative you're going to be able to get with this. So this really does emulate, this is a kind of effect that I know that Pink Floyd were using a lot. A lot of uh, progressive rock bands, it's in the 70s. So it's, it's a very, very creative tool and you can have some real fun with it. I will say that with the kind of analog style delay plugins on the MPC, there isn't really any effort there to emulate any kind of saturation and tolerance emulation that kind of stuff so it you know you you're not that you know they haven't emulated some of the plugins that you get in your door nowadays it will emulate the hiss the saturation the intolerances between uh, different parts of the of the unit um some parts being slightly inaccurate um the tubes being warmed i mean it just gets ridiculous some of the stuff that acoustica audio do and plug-in alliance and multiple other companies they will emulate each individual circuit you don't have that in the mpc these are all quite clean there's not really any character but saying that you can mix these with lo-fi tube drive those kind of things if you want to imprint that kind of saturation sound uh the vintage compressor all those kind of plugins which are, which i've reviewed uh, which i've made videos on 
so check those out so you you can you can kind of emulate some of the older analog units but you're not really getting the emulation there that you have from the tape hiss saturation all that kind of stuff but you know that can be good in some ways because you're going to introduce noise and everything into your mix so that is pretty much it there is one more which is the sample delay now sample delay is not really a, a delay plugin as such however you can use it as kind of a slapback effect and i'll show you you can also use it as a hass effect so you've got the option of samples or milliseconds but what you can do is by delaying the left and right signal you get, the brain will perceive them slightly behind each other and it will give the effect the Hass effect which makes uh, make can make a mono signal spread out and can give everything width so you can do that with this delay plugin but what you can do which where it's more like an actual delay plugin sorry is get that slap back effect this is really really good on vocals it was used a lot on a lot of rockabilly kind of stuff elvis used it uh, or elvis's engineers used it rather um and it's good on guitar it's it's good on sounds with tran uh, you know with with solid transients That's a classic, classic 80s electro kind of thing. So it's, it's actually really useful, despite the fact that it's not really a, an actual delay plugin, it's a sample delay plugin. So, you, but you can use it. I, I actually, if I'm gonna be doing, if I want something with a slapback or if I want something to kind of with, with a hass effect or that classic early 80s electro sound, you know arthur baker uh, that kind of thing i actually reach for this plugin so there you have it i hope now that you have all the information that you need to choose which delay you need to use depending on what track you're working on what situation you're in at least now you have all the information that you need you're armed to the teeth with delay knowledge and i hope that helps thanks for watching this is the quakes motel my name's conan until next time